Hi again everyone. In this simple video we're going to discuss how to evaluate one-sided limits of functions. The particular function we're going to look at is defined here and we're asked to discuss the limiting behavior of g of x as x approaches 2 from the right, as x approaches 2 from the left and as x approaches 2. So a and b involve one-sided limits and c involves a general limit. Now before we get to that though, why are these limits important? How are they useful? Well, the limit of a function as x approaches some number a, if this limit exists, describes the function's behavior near the point a. And this can be important information, for example, in modeling phenomena, where knowledge of the limit enables us to make pre precise predictions about the state or the behavior of the phenomena under consideration when x is close to a. Anyway, let's, let's build our, tuition, uh, our intuition a little bit and consider the following example. Here's our g of x. Discuss the limiting behavior of g near 2. So the first thing we flag is that g of 2 is not defined. So essentially what this question is asking us is how does g behave near this point, even though this point's not in the domain of G. Okay, well, firstly notice that we've got an absolute value sign in our definition of G. So let, let's remind ourselves what the absolute value um, really means. And it's defined in the following way. If Z is a number, then the absolute value of Z is defined as z if z's greater than or equal to zero and negative z if z is less than zero. So what this means is if the um, expression inside the absolute values is non-negative then you just remove the absolute values. If, the absolute, uh, if what's in the absolute values is negative then you remove the absolute values and put a minus sign. So we're going to use that information to um, simplify g. So the basic idea of my solution here is to simplify g as much as possible by removing or simplifying the absolute value sign and then taking the limit. Okay, so let's consider g. Now the first thing I notice, I can actually factorise um, the expression inside the absolute value signs and I can factorise it in the following way. Now, I recognise that I have an x minus 2 up here and x minus 2 down the bottom. Well, maybe, maybe they'll cancel at some point. So what I'm going to do is further simplify. By the dot here, I mean multiplication of the two absolute values. And now what I'm going to do is remove this absolute value sign by expanding it in a similar way as I have up here. Now I'm going to leave this absolute value sign. I could, I could expand that if I wanted to, but it's actually not going to serve any purpose here. Okay, so by definition, absolute x minus 2 is x minus 2 if... x minus 2 is positive. Now, if x minus 2 is positive, that means x is strictly greater than 2. And again, by definition, if x minus 2 is negative, then all I do is I remove the absolute signs and put a minus out the front. So that's a, that's a 3 there. Now, x minus 2 is negative when x is strictly less than 2. So now what I see is, oh great, I can cancel some of these off and I can write my g of x very compactly and simply. Okay, so now I've simplified my g of x as much as I need to. I could expand, expand those as well, get rid of these, but it's not really necessary for this problem. 
Okay, so let's look at our limits then. Let's get on and solve. Okay, so the first thing we have is, in part A, limit as x approaches 2 from the right. Okay, so let's go back to our simplified expression for g. Now, as x approaches 2 from the right, it means x is strictly greater than 2. So this is the correct definition of g on this interval. So now it's no problem just to take the limit here. Okay, in part B, we're asked to calculate the limit here as a uh, limit of G as X approaches 2 from the left. So this means that X approaches 2 from the left means X is strictly less than 2. So this would be the correct definition of G for this region. So there's so we negative absolute x plus three. Okay, so this is just going to be similarly up here. We get minus five. So the last question is, what is the limit of g of x as x approaches two? Now, notice that our right-hand limit and our left-hand limit are not equal. So this should be equals minus 5. Okay. Notice our right-hand limit, our left-hand limit are not equal. So by definition, This limit does not exist. Okay, so that's the problem solved. Let's look at the bigger picture though. You can see uh, in my solution I simplified the original function as much as possible through algebraic manipulation. I tried to get rid of the absolute value signs or simplify them in some way and then look for some cancellation and, fa and factorization was a part of that too. I didn't use this second point, but this is just a general point about limits. Look to apply basic limit laws or more advanced ideas like the pinching theorem or the Hopital's rule. And again, um, it's important that you understand you learn mathematics by doing mathematics. Don't just sit there passively and watch this video and think, oh, I know all about these things now. It's very important for you to experiment and try things for yourself. So I've left an, an example for you to do. Here's a function. Discuss these one-sided limits and this limit here. It's very simple to the, uh, very similar to the uh, example that I've done for you today.